All right, good evening and welcome to a special prime time edition of the Utopian Cafe. It's Monday, October 25th, a big date historically for Mets fans. Today is the 35th anniversary of Game 6 of the 1986 World Series. So tonight, I'm going to share my memories of that night, uh, preview the 2021 World Series, uh, and then we'll take a look at Game 6 of the Utopian Baseball Universe Championship Series coming up tomorrow night. Uh, for those of you expecting to see three of us tonight, uh, my apologies. Uh, Stan is not feeling well. He's going to join us Friday morning. And David uh, is busy with work-related stuff. He's going to join us Thursday night. And don't worry, David, if you're watching, we will definitely talk about Game 6 that night as well because I'd like you to share some of your memories. This group has uh, grown over a 1,000 people since the last time you talked about that on the show. So <clears throat> I want to talk about uh, – we're going to start with, by talking about Game 6, 86 first. I was 11 years old. And uh, I had become a Mets fan in May of 84. Um, so the team was just starting to get good. But at the time, I didn't even really know what any of that meant. Uh, the first World Series I ever watched was the 83 series between Philadelphia and, and Baltimore. I watched it on a 10-inch black and white. I love Pete Rose. For whatever reason, I liked John Denny. I think I had one of his baseball cards, but <clears throat> I didn't become a Mets fan until 84. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, when we got cable, my grandma and I would watch Cubs games during the day and I would watch the Mets uh, at night and on weekends. And uh, in 86 game six, <clears throat> of course, uh, one of the greatest uh, games in the history of baseball. There's two moments in that game. I always uh, talk about that I use as a litmus test if I don't cry when I re-watch those, then something's wrong, then it's time for an intervention. The first is in the first inning, uh, when Michael Sergio comes down and um, parachutes onto the field. Uh, there's two moments. Um, first, when he lands and he's walking to the dugout, there's this, uh, I, I get goosebumps uh, thinking about it. Uh, there's a shot of Dwight Evans in the on-deck circle, and he's just like, like, yeah, it, it's happening tonight. Um, and then as he gets into the dugout, RJ, Ron Darling, gives him five. And every time I see that, I sob. I don't know why. It has nothing to do <clears throat> with the outcome of the game, but I love it. And then obviously the ending down to two outs, single, 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 pass ball, you know the rest. Um, Dave, David, Stan, and I were going to announce tonight, uh, and I'll do it anyway because I'm excited to share this. Uh, we are going to screen Game 6 86 in December. We're going to do it on a, either a Friday night or a Saturday night. We're going to screen the entire game. If Facebook takes it down, they take it down. But we're going to screen that entire game. And anyone who wants to be on camera with us, because we can have, I think, up to 10 people, even if the, the game itself only takes up, like, you know, a little bit of the screen, you're going to watch us react to it. Mets fans, Red Sox fans, baseball fans. We're going to do that three times in the offseason, three different games. We're going to do game 686, and then we haven't decided what the other two are going to be, but um, very much looking forward to that. Live reactions to classic games from the past. So I'm excited for that. Um, game six, <clears throat> I watch every year. I watch game six and seven every year. I don't watch the entire series every year, but I probably have seen every inning of every game of that series probably at least a dozen times. Um, I feel like I'm due to watch the entire thing. I, I have to tell you right now, and I, <clears throat> I actually get choked up thinking about this. 
my girlfriend Jen is the first human being, and I'm a father, I'm a brother, I'm a son, I'm a friend to some. Jen is the first human that has volunteered to watch that with me. I've never watched it with anyone. Uh, when that happened live, I think my grandma went to bed in like the fifth inning. Uh, so I experienced that alone. I've never been able to watch that. My daughter, I think, watched the first couple innings with me once and then just got bored. So uh, Jen and I are going to watch that together uh, this winter. And uh, maybe she'll be part of that broadcast if she wants to. But uh, today's the anniversary. I get emotional. I can feel my body uh, react to the memory. It's, it's my favorite baseball memory of all time. Number two is... Um, Easter Sunday, 1987, the Brewers. Um, those are the two moments where I, when I watch that, I, I just lose it. Uh, so that's today. I'm excited. Uh, and that's going to happen again. We're going to stream that live within the group, uh, probably at the end of December. So very much looking forward to that. Now, uh, I really wish Stan was here tonight because Stan and I, uh, I almost, we almost got in a fight yesterday. I'm kidding, of course, but uh, so the conversation came up, uh, can you root for a rival? So the Braves and Astros are in the World Series, kicks off tomorrow on Fox. Atlanta Braves, Houston Astros, I'm a Mets fan. I've never, ever, in a regular season game, rooted for the Atlanta Braves, ever. I, I can't remember any time ever doing it. <clears throat> but. Before I'm a Mets fan, I'm a baseball fan. And just like when you go to a restaurant or if you have an election and you only have two options left, and you're not really a fan of either, but choosing a side for some people enhances it. And for me, even though there's not an emotional connection to either team, uh, I'm, I'm rooting for the Braves in, in this particular World Series for a couple reasons. One, I've met, I would say, <clears throat> three dozen, maybe four dozen, 50 people maybe, that are diehard Braves fans since February. And some of them have become good friends of mine. And it's been 22 years since they've been there. And the Astros have been there twice in the last four years. And we all know about the cheating accusations and all that. Um, I just think this Braves team is a more likable team. Um, I'm not a fan anymore of El Tuve. I'm definitely not a fan of Bregman or Correa, the way they handled that whole thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm rooting for the Braves. Now, my co-admin and friend Stan said, you can't root for a rival if you're a true fan. And I, I disagree. I'm a baseball fan. And <clears throat> I, I think where we had disagreement is like when I played baseball or when I played basketball or anything I competed uh, in, my opponent in a lot of situations became uh, a friend or a relationship was built where if we competed on that basketball court or on that baseball diamond and they beat me, I had an interest in seeing how far they'd go. And I wanted to see them succeed because they pushed me. And as a fan of the Mets, uh, that, that's kind of how my fandom has been, where Braves and Mets go at it 18, 19 times a year. And it's intense. But... If the Braves win the division and the, and the and Mets fans are watching at home, I would rather see the Braves do well. There's a sense of pride seeing your division move on. I, I'm not familiar at all with I mean I, I mean I know some of the players, but I, I haven't watched any Dodgers baseball all year. I haven't watched Astros baseball. I don't watch a lot of national games anymore. I watch the Mets. I listen to the Brewers. 
because the Braves are in the division with the Mets, I've seen 18, 19 Braves games this year. And I would rather see them succeed than a team I'm not as familiar with, especially this Astros team. So we disagree on that. I don't think there really is right or wrong answers, but I'd like to hear what you guys think about that. I am excited for the series. I think it's a great story. Uh, The Braves had a losing record well into August. Of course, my Mets had a three-month stay in first place that they lost uh, to the Braves. I think the Phillies were there for a little bit, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Really happy for my uh, friends that are Braves fans. Um, And quite honestly, I don't know if we have many Astros fans in the group, at least not as verbal, but uh, good luck to your team as well. It's just going to be a fun series. I'm I'm very much looking forward to it. That starts tomorrow. Uh, The last thing I want to talk about tonight is the Utopian Baseball Universe Championship Series has been unreal. The home team is 5-0. and The Braves swept in Atlanta. The Reds swept in Cincinnati. Tomorrow night, we go back to Atlanta. Phil Necro versus Johnny Cueto. If the Reds win, they're champions of the universe. If the Braves win, we set up a Game 7 on Wednesday night, Warren Spahn versus Jose Rio. I just want to say... To all the Reds fans and all the Braves fans, there can be only one winner. I'm not rooting for either team. I control one team every night, which is determined by uh, a flip of the coin. I just want to say, whatever outcome we have, uh, thank you guys for being a part of it. Uh, We're at almost 1,200 members. Last year's uh, Utopian Baseball Universe Championship Series, we had about 60 members. And it was great. But if you were in the group last year, it was a little bit bittersweet for me because I was not doing well at the time. I had torn an LCL in my left leg and a stutter that I've struggled with for nine years when I'm under a great anxiety or stress came back in the middle of that series. And if you watch the old YouTube telecast from last year, I'm not even speaking for, for, for much of that series. I was actually crying through an entire game because I'd waited all year to present this to you and I couldn't do it. And this year and I'm in a really good place. Um, I've been in a really good place for about 11 months now. And this has been probably the best year of my life, 2021. Meeting all of you, uh, you you become family, extended family of mine. And um, I'm really excited to bring this home tomorrow and Wednesday. And uh, we'll be wrapping up the cafe on Friday for two weeks, and then we'll return November 15th. And Stan and I are gonna bring you a new show starting November 10th. And I'll be bringing you a talk show starting uh, December 7th. I've already, uh, I've got the list right here. We're gonna announce it Friday. I've got nine of my 13 guests confirmed and ready to go. Uh, I've got four uh, emails out to other people with backups. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited. So, uh, thank you. And, uh, tomorrow at four central, we'll bring you the cafe leading up into game six of the Utopian Baseball Universe Championship Series at five central. So that gives everyone plenty of time to watch game one of the World Series. So I want to get to some comments. 
Uh, Facebook user says he was two, he or she was two in 1986. Yeah, I was 11, uh, but I remember it very well. John Keeney will love this. Yes. I, I want get, to actually get John in on that telecast. I think that would be a lot of fun. I feel like anybody voting against the Braves right now isn't really a baseball fan. And so glad you're doing so much better. Yeah, I do. I just I feel really good uh, the last 11 months. And if anyone is curious as to why, um, <clears throat> daily journaling. Uh, I set, I, I actually, every night, I make a checklist for the next day to make sure that everything needs to get done uh, in both of my jobs, in my personal life, in my creative life. Um, I made a list of gratitude uh, that I check daily just to remind myself that things get better and um, just treating every day as if it's the only one I have. So I no longer let the past bother me. I no longer bank on the future. I don't even make plans, long-term plans. I wake up and I look around and I go, all right, hey, let's do it again. So that's been the difference. Thank you for being a part of it. And we'll see you tomorrow at four for the cafe. And then game six tomorrow. I cannot wait. Everyone have a good night.